Hello, and welcome back to Flute Tip of the Week. Today, I am in sunny Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm very sorry to anyone from the South who just despise the accent I tried to do. Yeah, today I'm going to be a tourist for the first time in years. I'm excited to go and see one of the largest aquariums in the world. I never get to do touristy things, and so it's awesome that I actually have the time to do this for once. But before I run off and do all of that, I wanted to share with you a way to instantly insert life into your sound, whether you're playing something long and lugubrious, or something short and detached. So let's jump right in. It's important to be able to do vibrato right at the start of the note so that not only is your sound full and ringing right from the beginning of your phrase, but also your detaches will be a lot more lively and have much more buoyancy. When you see string players preparing to do a note, you will very often see them already doing vibrato before they actually bow with their other hand. This not only shows that they are immediately ready to have something ringing, but also it means that they've internalized the sound that they are about to create, and so are more ready to be able to do that right from the beginning. And very often, with any wind instrument really, we can have the tendency to wait even just a fraction of a second before we introduce the vibrato after we've already started the metal. And sometimes this might be good for the interpretation of the kind of music you're playing, but it's really important to be able to control having that energy in life right from the start of your tone so that it doesn't sound like your expression or your emotion is held until after the note has already begun. In a way, it's very similar to when you're practicing doing legato slurs when you're doing your long tone exercises, where you have to imagine that your air and vibrato are almost a separate entity from your fingers so that everything is really smooth and not just stopping and starting every time you change pitch. First though, let's talk about the vibrato with short detached notes. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do vibrato every single time you have anything that's staccato, because for some pieces that is not not going to be characteristically accurate. For instance, if you're playing a piece where it's very much about machinery, it might not be so characteristic to do some sort of liveliness when you are trying to interpret something that is quick and, for lack of a better word, inanimate. However, it is still important to be able to have the vibrato so that the phrase continues and it doesn't just sound like broken up pieces of information. Let's take an E-flat major scale. First, let's do it slurred and with vibrato floating all the way through the phrase. Okay, now let's do it with articulation on each note, but still pretty tenuto. Now, let's start making it shorter and more detached. It's important to make sure now that the vibrato isn't going to be too deep and have too large an amplitude so that it doesn't get in the way of the sound production and doesn't impede the speed of your staccatos. So I'm going to do that again except now with a more shallow vibrato that is more of a spin inside of the note rather than a separate entity which is the vibrato. Now, let's do it even shorter, so that we can really get a sense of what it feels like to do it very staccato, but still with the little burst of ring at the beginning. Now let's compare that to what it sounds like when we don't put the effort into having a little bit of vibrato ringing through the notes and just having it completely straight. While it sounds clean and still gets the job done, for a lot of pieces, it will make more sense to have the extra bit of ring in it to be able to have the energy. So I'm going to do the first half of that scale again without the ringing, and then the second half of the scale with the vibrato. As you can hear, there isn't that much difference between the length of the note and the separation between that and the next one, whether you're using the vibrato or just playing it straight. And this is a way to make sure that when you're playing fast technical parts of your music, it doesn't just sound like an exercise and it's still very musical. It also helps to make it sound a little bit more magical, which is helpful for phrases like at the beginning of Mendelssohn's Scherzo for a Midsummer Night's Dream. So again, that tip 
was learn to control your vibrato so that it's there right from the start of your phrase. This will not only mean that your sound is ringing and beautiful right from the start, but also it'll make your detaches a lot more lively and have greater buoyancy. Hope you find this week's tip helpful. The start of the vibrato is always really important to remember for basically any wind instrument. So this kind of concept really needs to be carefully thought of. And for people who have a lot of natural vibrato, they can take it for granted. So until next week, flute happy and vibrate happy. any cool ideas for our last few seconds clip. Here's a video of my dog snoring. <laughs>